Hello, I'm Carson. And I'm Connor. And we're from 5203G Gremlin, and here's our uh, World's Robot Explanation video. So, as you can see, uh, it's a pretty simple robot. Uh, we stayed simple throughout the entire year, and it worked out very well for us. We'll start with the drivetrain. Uh, we were running 450 RPM, and we had these two uh, center traction wheels. Well, they're flex wheels, and they're 68 flex wheels, so that helped us get over the barrier. Um, on the sides of the chassis, we had these, these custom plexi side plates, which allow us to cover up the gears and make sure we can go over really smoothly. Uh, we ran 600 drive. We had the custom McMaster spacers. Uh, if I've seen some teams that don't run them. If you don't run them, as soon as we put them on, they removed a ton of friction from the drivetrain. So definitely run the McMaster spacers. And then, you know, we have screw joints on these and these. They work pretty well. And then we had 600 drive, battery in between, tank on bottom, another tank on top of that. We ran this back three wide. It got bent like crazy. Definitely brace your back bars, but it's whatever. We made it to the dome. And then uh, we have the intakes. Intakes are really simple. Uh, they're 200, 1200 RPM. We ran flex wheels, because uh, flex wheels are just way better. And we had a zip tie in front. Uh, this didn't get entangled at all. It got broke off a couple times, but it never got entangled. We had this really simple trap door that was on a hinge on this high strength axle. And then this plexi acted as a backstop. And this three wide was the actual trap door portion. So it could bend down and then come back up. And it's very lightly banded. And we just put a tri ball in like that. We could outtake it and then pull another one. And it really worked really simply. And then we could still use it like a normal intake. You're gonna, you're gonna drive into the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the trap door worked fine, and it could just come out pretty easily. Yeah, so for our wings, we ran um, two front piston wings that were wedged to push them over the barrier very easily. Um, with, And then we had one back wing to scoop it out of the corner over here it's super simple very easy nothing complicated at all um on our intakes we also had these angled in a little bit so that when they came up to these little wall pieces they would just ride off it was basically wall riders but for the intakes and we had actual wall riders a little bit lower and then for our hangs we had this uh the main c tier hang um which we, at the beginning, we had a problem with the intakes for them to come up. They would hit the point here, so we had to raise it up at the start of the match. On these standoffs in here, um, which were banded back and on just a single point of contact. So that way, when it was time to hang, you go to the hang bar, it would release up, and then the, hang, the, the standoffs would fall inward. So that way, when you went up to the, the hang bar, it could go all the way down and see how the intakes would hit it normally when it's all the way down. And then we also added this, uh, this little balancing um, halfway through the worlds. Um, shout out to 2029C for letting us use their field uh, at super late at night in Texas. And so this thing had a little rubber band with a little plexi circle on it that went into our robots and hooked up this piston at the back like that. And then when it activated, this piston would just pull back, releasing this hang bar, which was banded to always be upwards. This plexi circle, as opposed to using like a zip tie or... Um using just the direct rubber band to the piston. It removes a lot of the friction, so it's nearly guaranteed to work on even like one PSI. And so that's something that we really wanted to rely on. Yeah. Um, our hang is also four of the long pistons to go up and also has a bunch of rubber bands to assist on the downward motion to get it all the way up. And then for our tanks, we had the one in the bottom and then one was stacked on top of it um don't worry too much about the tubing that was very bad but um they were connected 
because you definitely couldn't get to that nozzle in there. So you can only get to this nozzle, which we could have done the uh, connected to a stopper, but we just didn't. Um, so we connected it to two stoppers instead um, to where this tank was connected to this tank. And when you close both of them, they would be separated tanks and there wouldn't be the leak through the top of the stopper. Um, that way we can use all the air we want for our wings and not have to worry about running out of PSI for our hang at, at the end of the match. And then something to note about our balancing is when we did actually balancing, we came up onto the barrier and as opposed to most balancings, uh, we actually latched on the cross section between the horizontal bar and the vertical bar and that helped it get up very consistently and also just gave it a lot more to rely on when we were driving in um, because physically it's easier to hold the robot from tipping forward if this is higher up on the pole and also supported by the horizontal pole. So you can see if, even if I ram push it forward, it's still off the ground. So it was really reliable. But yeah. As simple as it, as it is, that's essentially our world robot. Um, it got to the to the dome. We won the math division. Uh, strategy and driver was was really intense in this game, but that all starts with a simple robot and a well designed one. And so we kept everything simple and consistent. It was well tested. So yeah, good luck in uh, high stakes. <laughs>